Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Devesh Lathi, and I'm the program manager here at the Next Seniors Foundation. I welcome all of you for this call today. Uh, so here we on this call, we have two very special guests. We have uh, Ms. Nicole Winsley, who is the Director of Admi International Admissions at Union College, New York. Uh, Union College has been a Next Seniors partner for the past four years. And it's uh, very exciting to have them on board this year. Uh, hello, welcome, Nicole. We also have uh, one of the next senior scholars, uh, Sri Hari Balaji from uh, Union College class of 23. And uh, he won a next senior scholarship last year. And he is, he is now in the second year uh, at the college. And uh, welcome, Sri Hari. So, Welcome both of you, and we'll we'll move forward with the call. So, what's on the agenda today? So, we uh, in in this forty-five minute call today, we are going to take you through a uh, journey of a next senior scholar, where Sri Hari will share his journey with all of us. We'll talk about his experience uh, for through the next senior scholarship program, and also about his experience at Union College. Uh, following that. Uh, Nicole will uh, talk to us about what are the most popular majors at uh, Union College, what are the benefits of studying at a small liberal arts college, and uh, finally she'll tell us, she'll reveal the secrets about what she looks for or what, what are the traits that they look for when they're identifying a next senior scholar. And uh, finally, I'll talk a little bit about this year's program timeline and then we'll have about five to ten minutes to take the question and answers. So without any further ado, I invite Sri Hari to uh, uh, start talking about his experience uh, as a student at Union and share with everyone his journey. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, everyone. I hope you've been doing really well. Uh, my name is Sri Hari. I'm a rising sophomore at Union College, pursuing a major in mechanical engineering and a minor in astronomy. Uh, so my journey with Next Genius started in uh, 2018 when I came to know about this program, this wonderful program, the month of July. So, you know, I dug deeper into it and came to know about all the, all the causes that were associated to it. Uh, what particularly I really liked about this program was uh, its partnership with the union, which uh, I was really looking forward to apply to, considering it's a small school with an excellent liberal arts program and also an engineering program, which were I was really looking forward to as I knew I wanted to pursue an engineering stream as well as get a really good uh, liberal arts education. Uh, so the, the next genius scholarship uh, application process started off in the, the month of September. That's when I applied and uh, I took the entrance exam in the month of October. And when I came to know that I cleared it, I was one of the top uh, 1,500 students to have uh, passed the exam. After that, I was told that I, I was supposed to fill a form listing my top five choices, and obviously my uh, top three itself were union. And after that, in the month of January, I had, I had an interview. It was for a couple of days, and then on the second day, we had the announcement of the scholarship winners, and I was one of those really, really proud of uh, I joined union in the fall last year, and I've had a wonderful experience so far. I've been a part of uh, Aerospace Club, which is called the SAE Aero Club on campus, which focuses on aerospace design, aerospace education, as well as participating in the SAE Aero competition and the micro class division. So apart from activities, I've also been involved in research experiences. I'm currently pursuing some research in extragalactic astrophysics, focusing on the topic of uh, environmental effects on galaxies at Union under the mentorship of Professor Rebecca Goodwin. I also did work study in the same field uh, for two terms, fall and winter term. And I really like that topic and hope to continue doing research on that. Apart from that, the really small classes of Union, which ranges from about 20 to 25 students, are really, really good because you get a personal interaction with the professor. It's pretty much like your high school classroom where you get to ask, raise your hand and get to ask questions. You don't want to hesitate or anything at all, professors are really kind. They always encourage you to attend their office hours. More than that, uh, you know, professors also make sure that if you're not available for any of their office hours, they would make time 
for you specifically uh, if you say that any specific time that you're available. Also, uh, considering that Union is also a resource focused university, the inter integrated science and engineering complex was open uh, last year in the, uh, the, in the month of December. And we have really taken all students, uh, really love that place. The SAE Aero Club has its room over there. We have the Rocket Club as well. So, really cutting edge research along with some excellent liberal arts courses as well. For example, I had a chance to take a course in uh, anthropology last term and I also had a chance to take something called the first year preceptorial which is a compulsory course that students take. In that course I learned about cultures and nation. Considering I've traveled to about 15 countries so far it was really nice to know about people from other cultures as well who were in my class and to know their perspective being citizens of their country and how it is like to come to union and uh, basic, basically like blend in with the culture here and share their thoughts and ideologies about uh, basically their culture and all that stuff. And uh, before that, definitely my high school background, I went to Smart Minds Academy in Chennai for grade 11 and 12 and the Indian Public School for grade 9 and 10 in Eno. We'll, we'll come back to you with, with questions as, as we get, as the students uh, will have some questions about your experience. I'll, I'll get back to you for that. So uh, let's move on to Nicole. Nicole, uh, what are the most popular majors at international, uh, for international students at Union College? Well, you know, I, I would say that you're probably not surprised that multiple engineering fields are pretty popular at Union. Uh, so Sri Hari chose wisely. Top majors are most common majors, economics um, and things that fall off of economics, economics, international business, um, people focused in business and entrepreneurship. That's all housed within economics. So that's one of our top majors at Union. Um, and we talk about research, but I would also say internships are the other piece. So we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more in terms of why a small liberal arts and science college is important. Mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, neuroscience, very popular, political science. So all things political science, uh, international studies as well. Psychology uh, is a, a popular field, especially for US students, but we're seeing it really growing um, amongst international students. Biology, electrical engineering, managerial economics, computer engineering, and computer science. These would be the fields that I would say are most popular with international students. The other thing I would say is that 75% um, or more of our students are double majoring or to our, and are also taking courses across disciplines. So much like Srihari said, um, you know, he's in one field and then able to take classes in an entirely different field if he chooses. And he may have a, a sense that that impacts his, you know, his, um, his field of astronomy or in engineering, but also just his ability to sort of grow and be marketable as a human. And, and so I would say that is a big piece of what happens at a small liberal arts and science college is not only that first year preceptorial, but really just being able to mix together other courses as well. Okay, yeah, well, that's wonderful. So uh, can you just uh, name some unique combinations of majors and minors that, that you see students uh, taking? Sure. So we have some a lot of engineering students who are interested in music as well. Um, it actually, if you understand the brain, plays on similar parts of the brain. Um, but we have an engineering and music lab, a sound lab. Um, mm -hmm. So that really, our, when we talk about that new integrated science and engineering space, what you find is not only um, science and engineering labs, but actually labs that mash up different disciplines together, like the music and, and um, engineering lab, which is actually in our old building. Um, so you're really looking at ways to integrate different disciplines. Um, some of the other interesting things, so uh, we have a data analytics lab and we see students who are in data analytics and environmental science. We have a professor that teaches both courses in that lab and looks at data and how it's applicable in environmental science. 
Um, we have students who are doing chemistry work along with art, so looking at paint and paint-based designs. Um, and similarly, art restoration, so restoring artwork and the use of technology. Um, some other unique things I'd say are things like uh, the, our students who are interested in neuroscience or bioengineering, who really work along with our psychology students or anthropology students to understand people more deeply in terms of their designs and what they're working on. So you'll find things that really work well together and make sense for our students to not only learn the depth of their major, so we always talk at Union about breadth and depth. So the reason our students are most, most successful is they can go deep into what they want to study. You've heard Srihari talking about how he's really gotten into his work study and his research, digging deep, right? right? But he's learning through his breath by having the ability to be in a residential community, learning from other people around the world, and then also taking classes that inform the work that he's doing, even if he doesn't re quite realize it yet. Wonderful. Um, Nicole, uh, what are uh, the benefits of studying at a liberal arts college, at a small liberal arts college like Union? And uh, how would you compare it to studying at a big state university, let's say? Yeah. So Union is unique in that we function much like a research one institution in terms of our lab spaces and the way that we focus our students on research or internships or both based on their major. The difference is that um, at a large institution, typically the research efforts and alumni efforts are focused on graduate students, so upper level students. At a place like Union where we're all undergraduate, the research, as you heard from Sri Hari, the very first term, you know, he's able to do work study. He's able to get involved in these clubs that are interested, interesting to him and not have to wait until he's an upper level student. He can begin research in his very first year. So I think the difference is at, especially at Union, we have amazing facilities that you get to use from your very first class versus waiting to be an upper level or graduate level student. So that's the very first thing is that for all four years, you have that very rich, full experience in terms of, it, of just lab space is access to professors. So professor access is part two. Um, in general, at a smaller school, you're going to interact and be taught only by professors. So PhDs, top in their field, from top Ivy League and top institutions around the world teaching you, your classes very closely, they know your name, they're inviting you to do research in their lab spaces, they're working and meeting with you one-on-one -on -one to share their knowledge, um, because again, they're there to teach you in your first four years. At Union, our students actually sit down with their advisors 50% more than even another undergraduate school because of our trimester system. So because our calendar is broken apart into three parts of the year, our students actually have more access to their advisors and more access and time with their professors as a result of our calendar. So I think that piece is also important. The last I would say is that residential learning is an important part of what happens at colleges like ours. So learning can happen in the classroom and should. Learning can happen in a lab and should. But the clubs that you participate in and the opportunities that happen outside of the classroom are really also what help you to grow and become a really amazing person and much more successful when you leave campus. Whether it's the connections and the friendships you have and the way you learn from them, or the connections with our alumni that you develop that can help you along your way. Those connections are very important. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I always, uh, so all uh, Union is a, is a very, very old college. And uh, over these years, I'm sure there have been many traditions that uh, the students are involving in, right? Uh, what is one of your favorite tradition at Union College? So my favorite, may sound a little underwhelming, but it gives me tears every time it happens. So we start out the year, this, the first year students get these t-shirts with the union you know, anthem on it, and it's upside down so you can kind of pull it out and read it. We don't expect you to know it, but they go out and sing outside the president's house and they sing to him. And so I think that's just a way 
of, of just sort of coming together and because it's sort of your first introduction and in becoming, you know, brothers and sisters of union, which is how we talk about it. So I think, you know, that's pretty special. Um, for our international students, they have, we have a welcome dinner in the president's garden with the president and his family where you get to just mingle and, and talk with, you know, some of the staff that are there, talk with the president and have a chance to meet him and, and, you know, and learn a little bit more about his vision. Um, and, and the last tradition I'll say is um, when students also first come on campus, we do a little tasting tour of Schenectady, which is our city. And I think, again, some of what you learn in the classroom, but I think having, you know, knowing a little about what's in our community, community, walking around with your friends, tasting food from a bunch of different restaurants, and learning just your community that you are living in beyond the campus, I think also is just a, kind of a fun tradition um, as well, okay. so. Okay, that's great. Uh, Sriya, you have also completed your first year at Union Campus. Um, what is uh, the one tradition or, or the one aspect uh, or the, about union that you really love? I definitely say the sense of belongingness, considering union is a tight-knit community. You know, you get to know your professors very well, and you also you get to know your classmates really well. For example, I took a course uh, in winter term called Physics 120 that was matter in motion. Uh, most of the students were from different backgrounds, and I really not only got to uh, learn from students who were really proficient in physics, but also got to share my knowledge and my experience in the Indian education system and how that would actually uh, basically help me solve certain physics problems. Because in the Indian education system, you've taught multiple methods to solve a single problem, which some of them were not aware of. And some of the methods that they taught me, I, I wasn't able to understand initially. So it's, it's really like a type of community where students help each other and you know we get along really well. Okay, okay. That's wonderful. So uh, let me move on to uh, the next uh, segment. Uh, I uh, let me first share with all of you the the, the process of the next senior scholarship program. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, I, I'll talk to you about the application process, and then uh, we'll I'll invite Nicole to talk about it a little further. Right. So uh, almost. Uh, uh, some of the students that who have, who have joined us today uh, have already registered for all those who have not yet applied to us. Here, here are the steps, stepwise process for you. So the, the application for the program has already open, is already open now. Uh, you can go to our website nextseniors.com and uh, you can register yourself. Once you register, you will get access to the Next Genius online test. It's, uh, it has uh, 36, 18 multiple choice questions. Uh, in, on maths and English, and uh, I'm sure all of you will enjoy solving those. Once you have taken the test, uh, we then uh, share details about all the Next Genius partners with you. Uh, we help you connect with all the partners. We share all the resources to help you select uh, the college that you would you feel most uh, that you, that would be a good fit for you. And uh, meanwhile, uh, while all this is going on, we also connect with you. Uh, for multiple mini interviews, so we, we we do a video interview with you. A next senior scholar does a phone call or a video interview with you. So all through between August and October, you we we, we connect with you a couple of times to this to uh, help to learn more about yourself. Once that is done, uh, you finally submit your college preferences to us via a Google form where you tell us about which colleges are the top three of your choices. And then finally you get allocated one of those three. Most most likely, in most cases, you'll get allocated your first preference college. Uh, finally, uh, uh, from October to December, you work on your college application. You, uh, you submit your common app, you submit your Test scores or English proficiency scores. Uh, if you if you have taken SAT or ACT, if you submit your uh, your teachers, your counselor submits the recommendation letters and transcripts. Your teachers submit their recommendation letters, and finally you submit your uh, financial paperwork, which is either the certification of finance or the uh, international student financial aid application or the CSS profile 
and that that is all completed by mid of december finally uh, on january 25 uh, you all of you come back come to mumbai for uh, in person interview where you meet the university representatives uh, and in next seniors and next day itself so on the saturday we meet for an interview and, and on the sunday uh, we announce the scholarships so that's where i i now invite nicole to talk and to share about what what happens behind the scenes and what are the factors that you look for when you are uh, identifying the next senior scholars absolutely so um timeliness that would be number one <laughs> so it's a quick turnaround from december to the end of january so the first thing we look at is to please have your application in on time sooner is always better than later um, and including all of your materials. So uh, that includes any transcripts and it includes financial aid. So at Union, we require the CSS profile. And uh, I saw that there's a question there in terms of financial aid and scholarships. So I'll just talk about that as we kind of talk through the process. So the first things we look at when I look at the application are academic readiness, language readiness, so just verifying English proficiency is there, and then financial ability. So the way that union works, Next Genius, our Next Genius full tuition scholarship is full tuition. We also offer several partial tuition scholarships. Um, and then we also offer need-based financial aid for those who complete the CSS profile. If you do not complete the CSS profile, you are not considered for need-based financial aid. Students who apply through Next Genius or apply just to Union, both are considered for need-based financial aid, and we do meet full need for students who are admitted. Our students who are admitted to Union typically can contribute 30,000 US dollars or more towards the cost of attendance. For those who can contribute less than that, they're most, um, they're most competitive in one of our two early decision rounds. Uh, so that gives you an overview of our financial aid. So what we're looking for at Union and Next Genius is that we understand the students who have come through the Next Genius selection and reached the point of applying to us, you're already some of the top in the country in India. We know that you are already pretty spectacular. So what we're looking for is having to make the really hard choice of who's going to get the full tuition. That's the hardest choice. And for as many as we can offer partial tuition to, based on our, our financial aid budget, we will. So um, you, for those who come all the way through to the selection, we know that you are already pretty stellar at that point. The, so we review application and financial aid first before we even begin um, looking through interviews and things like that, just to make sure students are qualified and we're not misleading them in the direction of their ability to come to Union. The next step is interview. Um, so we engage with students through the individual interview process as much as possible. And I believe, um, Devesh, that that's an opportunity for students this year as well to meet one-on-one -on -one with us. And for those, um, I think Suhari will tell you, I'm a pretty nice person. I try to make them pretty fun. <laughs> and so the interviews are meant to be an opportunity for us to talk, for me to get to know you a little bit better one-on-one -on -one, and for you to get some of your personal questions answered. Because when we get to Mumbai in the group interview, that's, not, that's a harder space to really to shine or to ask your individual questions. There is space for that, for sure, but I want to make sure that you have space one-on-one -on -one because some people are really great one-on-one -on -one and in a large group setting, perhaps they're just, they're, they're a better group member. And so I'm not necessarily looking at every single person who's a leader, um, but I'm looking at how you shine as an individual and, and what your role is, how, how you fit in and what union is like. And that can mean many things. So the individual interview, I think, is an important opportunity for us to just to get to know each other and talk a little bit more about what your personal interests are. And I think that's true for every college. Um, the next step for the, the group sessions um, in Mumbai. So we try to do a lot of opportunities for you and your family to get to know more about our campus. 
so that you feel informed and your family also feels comfortable with the college that you're looking at. So are their questions answered? Do they feel comfortable with the place that um, you're applying to? Do they have enough information about the place they're sending their children? And then the selection, um, the group interview is actually, I would say it's more, a little bit more like summer camp and a little less like interview. So I think a lot of students came to the interview expecting to have rigorous grilling questions that were, you know, dr driving deep into their deep, deep knowledge. And I would say for just about all of us who are participating um, in terms of institutions at Next Genius, what we're doing is we're looking for a way for this to be fun, interactive. It's an interactive experience. We have a series of activities for you to participate in so that regardless of what your personality type is, hopefully within one of those activities, it allows you a chance to shine um, in terms of your interests and your participation. Um, the things that we're looking for in, in the actual interview are really just um, not only for you to demonstrate your knowledge, but you're in a group, just like on our campuses, you're in a community. So how do you work with your community? How do you engage with your community? Um, how do you show knowledge and respect at the same time? And so those are the things we're looking at uh, as we go through the process is to see as part of our Next Genius Scholar, you know, it's not necessarily just about intellect, but it's about how you engage with your world and your community as well. So, um, but mostly we try to make it fun. Wonderful. So I, I, I see a question here about what is the college uh, allocation process? So that is something which I can answer. So uh, when uh, you submit your college preferences to us, you submit your top three choices, after learning about all the next seniors colleges. Uh, and uh, in most cases, uh, we allocate you your top choice or your second choice. However, if that is not possible, then we all, of course I'll allocate your third choice and you have an option of whether to keep yourself on a wait list or whether to opt out of the process. So, because uh, for all the colleges, there are a limited number of interviews uh, that uh, we reserve. So uh, it's, uh, that's where uh, uh, limitation comes in, right? Okay, uh, and I see a few more questions coming in and uh, I'll just read those out. Uh, do you have a pre-med program besides leadership in medicine? So that's one for you, Nicole. Sure, absolutely. So our leadership in medicine program is in collaboration with Albany Medical School. Um, it's incredibly selective and um, for US citizens. For those who are not interested in doing the, uh, the LIM program, our pre-health program is one of our largest programs um, and that can be everything from physician, surgeon, dentistry, veterinary, um, it's anything that is in the health professions. So that is one of the most rigorous programs offered on campus. It's open to everyone. If you have interest in one of the health professions, you're assigned on top of your academic advisor, you're assigned a um, pre-health advisor as well to guide you through your entire time at Union uh, so that you're not only gaining the academic knowledge, but also research, internships, and all the experience you require for whatever health profession you're seeking so that you're prepared to move on to your next level of education when you complete. So it's a, it's a that full level, you can go to our website, the pre-health advising, um, it's, you can get dig in deep to it if you dig into specifics on that website. Um, you can keep going in terms of the, the services and support um, that's offered. I'd also encourage you to reach out to the pre-health advisor listed there. Um, she's spectacular and will answer any questions you have as well. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Nicole, uh, are uh, IB students at any advantage over the national curriculum CBSC, ICSC students? This is a question we hear a lot of times. What is your take on that? Sure. So what I would say is it's not an either or, first of all. So um, IB is in an IB realm and national curriculum is in a national curriculum realm, if that makes sense. So we look at students and how they're performing in the scope of the curriculum that they're in. IB happens to, on average, be easier to 
understand or translate because of the course work updates that we get. So I would say national curriculum students have to work a little harder to demonstrate progress through their curriculum, right? So you have your grade 10 board exams and then it kind of goes quiet. And then for this year, grade 11, some boards happened and then things went a little crazy and, you know, and then COVID happened and now we're all sorts of crazy and transcripts and whatever. So with IB, IB obviously we honor as one of the most um, rigorous and well-prepared curriculum um, for uh, specifically liberal arts and science colleges in the United States because of their methodology and teaching. So IB does receive credit um, for certain courses at Union. But we take a large number of students from the board curriculum as well, Indian board curriculum. Again, it's just to that point where interview becomes important. Um, if you can take SAT or ACT to show your progress post um, your, your 10 grade 10 boards, that's helpful, um, but not required. We just have to find a way um, for students, whether it's through recommendation letters, um, through you know, demonstration of curriculum to show progress because progress can be very difficult to obtain post grade 10 from an Indian curriculum. So that's very school specific though. Some schools are set up with great college counselors who know what they're doing in supporting students to the US. Others, we have to find a, a way for you to be able to demonstrate your academic ability post grade 10. Okay, wonderful. Um, uh, a student wants to know if they can major in engineering and minor in dance. Uh, uh, do, do they have a minor in dance at Union? Yes and yes. There's no limit on what you can, you can do a double major and a minor. You can mix up any that you like. Um, so yeah, there is no, no difference and a pretty great dance program as well. So absolutely. Wonderful. That's a great question. I love that. Uh, what carries the most importance in Union College application? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if this is uh, something is a, is a valid question, of course, but is there something that you would like to comment on that? Uh, what carries the most importance in Union, Union College application? So what I would say about your application is you have to think of it um, like an entire book rather than a final score. So your application isn't a final score that decides if you get in or out, which is sort of the mentality of how we work in the Indian system, right? In terms of your board score and college entrance. The way that the application works is it's not, it's not a ranking. It's, all, it's a package that comes together. So if you only read one part of a book, it wouldn't give you a picture of what's going on in all the rest of the book. You wouldn't know what's going on. And so I need the whole book and so they're all important. Your academics are important. Your interview is important as your personality to see your fit for school. Your essay is important. And the most important thing is that that whole book, that whole application answers the question of who am I, right? Because it's not a right or wrong answer. It's a look at your beautiful picture of who you are and let's see, can I see you on our campus and being successful and happy? And so what we're trying to decide through the application process is if we put you at Union, will you be successful and will you be happy? Is it the right place for you based on the entire application, the entire book of you? So if you think of it that way, that's, that's the way to think about it. Okay, great. Um, so uh, in the current scenario, a lot of students have not been able to take the SATs and ACTs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the question I'm sure you have been listening for a mm -hmm. lot of from a lot of students. So uh, first of all, if someone has not taken uh, SAT, uh, is he or she at a disadvantage? Yeah? No, so I think, again, SAT or ACT, for those who are in IB, AP, um, or US-based curriculum, not a problem, we are test optional. You just have to do some language assessment if needed. And again, that depends on your curriculum. For those who are coming out of the board curriculum, then we just have to work a little bit harder to be creative, and I'm on board with that. So your interview is absolutely important, part one, um, because if I understand your academics um, through you, through the interview, that, that makes a big difference, right? So Srihari, so if we're talking about his academic interests, right away I know just based on the way he's talking, he's pretty academically motivated. He's pretty academically engaged. You can get that from him 
even in high school, I could get that, you know, for hearing him talk about his interests. So that interview reflects your interests as well. There are things like Duolingo that are an easy app-based assessment that we accept that students can take. It's not terrific, but it's a great benchmark in terms of just language ability and a quick interview. I'd say the interview is, is computer generated, so less dynamic than meeting with a person, but for assessment, it is quick and easy um, to start with, and it does give a numerical value in terms of um, ability with language. Then the other pieces are just you having the ability to, um, for us to work together to see what, we, what your school can provide whether it's through, again, your school counselor or through um, someone at your school for us to understand your academic progression and where you're at based on the other students in your curriculum. So we will be flexible. Um, and, and I've been working with students from India for about 16 years. So I have enough knowledge of the board curriculum to know what to look at and not to look at in different schools. I have great colleagues at Next Genius to rely upon um, with my questions, which are many. So I think you know, communication will be important. This will be a hard year for students coming from the board schools without SAT, ACT, because you don't typically get progress reports that are reflective of your abilities, let's say. Grade 11 tends to not be exactly reflective of what you will end with at your time. So um, that, that is a, you know, I typically throw those out to begin with because they tend to be very low and motivating. Um, but not reflective of your abilities, so. Right, okay. Uh, because uh, Are you seeing or planning to make any changes in the application cycle or any changes in the application deadline for Union College this year? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay. No, we have two early decision, um, an early action and a regular decision deadline for students, um, and the, the deadlines will be the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is one question uh, about what makes uni a union unique altogether. Uh, are there any couple of things or, or maybe two or three points that you want to share with us here? Srihari, what do you think makes union unique? Yeah, uh, definitely. So apart from the tight-knit community, I would definitely say the research focus uh, at unit, considering like uh, students can get involved in research right from day one. I actually spoke to my astrophysics astronomy advisor the day I came to Union because Union also has uh, like a basically a meet with professors. So that's basically where uh, students can get to meet professors, department chairs of uh, different departments. They can explore their interests. Uh, also, a really unique thing about Union is to combine majors and minors. A uh, really amazing part was uh, I was considering mechanical engineering major and a physics minor initially. But when I came to know about the astrophysics research, I and I got involved in that, I was pretty much certain I wanted to do either astronomy or an astrophysics. And in my winter term, I was definitely sure that mechanical engineering major and astronomy minor is what I want to do for the next four years. Wonderful. So definitely a combination of majors, minors, and also a really intellectual community. Yeah. Okay. So what I would say, I mean, in terms of uniqueness of union, um, we are liberal arts and science college, right? So we do have a focus on the undergraduate. That's not unusual. We are unusual in terms of our level of instrumentation across disciplines. So our dance department, our arts department, as well as our science and engineering building all have state-of-the-art facilities. That is unique for a small all-undergraduate LAC. The other thing is that integration. So not only do people double major, but our professors actually teach courses. We have a Spanish professor who also teaches in environmental studies. So our professors really enjoy teaching courses that cross disciplines that feel like real world, right? So if you're, if you're thinking about um, psychology and want to start, do a startup in terms of a, um, you know, some sort of technology, you can work in psychology and computer science to launch those opportunities. So I think that is incredibly unique and that integration is, is very unique at Union, both in lab spaces, but also across disciplines. The other thing I would say is that Union, by our founding was in our name, Union College, was founded to bring together people in Union from various backgrounds. So the Knott Memorial, 16-sided, you'll see it on all of our things, originally built to represent 16 different world religions. 
And union was founded in the belief that of bringing people together at that time from different religions to grow and share and learn together in peace and harmony so that we can learn from each other. And in the United States, beyond all of the crazy with the um, immigration and pandemic, we also have issues around race and learning. And what we do at Union is make a safe space for our students to learn and grow from each other and to become better people so that we can truly be brothers and sisters at Union and learn together in that, in that way. And so I do think in this time when we're thinking about a global community, a space that's safe, for you to come to and a space where you can feel like you're a part of a family and a community that will support your growth but also honor who you are as a human i think that in this current time beyond anything else is incredibly important so that when you come to campus you know you'll be safe you know that the people on campus are looking out for you whether it's international student services advisors financial aid your professors the dean of students the president that they're there to look out for your best interests no matter what's happening, um, whether it's a pandemic or, or anything else, so that, that we're here. Um, okay, that's great. Uh, so Nicole, um, are, are subject tests a requirement for any particular courses at Union? No. Okay. Uh, this one is for you, Srihari. What are the most popular clubs on Union campus? I mean, I can't just generalize on like the most popular one, but as far as engineering concerned, definitely the SAE Aero Club. It's a really amazing opportunity, not just for engineers, but, you know, folks from different backgrounds. We have biology majors coming in, uh, you know, offering their insights about courses that they're thinking, and also some economics majors who want to be, say, treasurers of the club. Uh, another growing club is the Rocket Club, which was founded a couple of years ago by a union student. Uh, that's an excellent uh, club in order to learn about propulsion system and also apply your concepts of higher level engineering course. So I was involved in the club for winter term and I got to know about concepts of Bernoulli theorem and Navier Stokes equation, which usually students in their junior year learn. So Rocket, Aero Club, apart from that, Entrepreneurship Club is also a popular one. And definitely can't forget Shakti, that's the International uh, South Asian Student Association. We not only have uh, International students as part of the club, but also have a lot of Indian Americans. Close to about 60 students are active members of that club. And it's, it's an excellent, vibrant community. Wonderful. That's great. Um, Nicole, uh, do you uh, provide, uh, do AP courses provide extra credit at Union? And uh, does, uh, if is a student uh, at the benefit uh, in terms of the application if they have taken AP courses? So AP and by IB are both um, courses that students can receive credit for at Union. Um, there's a full chart of both AP and IB credit on our website. Um, and, and AP, much like IB, is because you're receiving credit, obviously is given, given strength and review. It's a, it's a curriculum that translates well um, as well beyond, beyond just the IB. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there is a question about which, which both of you can answer actually. What are, what are the typical uh, traits of a union student? If, you know, I'm sure a student cannot be put into boxes, but uh, if there are something that you would see in all the students around you, what would that be? Uh, Hari or... Um, we're definitely... Uh, there are a couple of things. First thing is like motivation to do something, uh, particularly uh, as far as I've seen my friends uh, in, in engineering field, a lot of them already know that they want to go to graduate school right after undergrad. So that's uh, like a career planning that they have. And a lot of them have met at uh, Becker Career Center, which is one of the best uh, career centers in uh, the United States. So a lot of them are very career motivated. The second thing that's common about students is uh, say sense of belongingness and also of a sense of community or everyone want, wants to help each other no matter you know if it's in academics or if it's say to culturally fit in or or anything you could just reach out to anyone and ask them for help so it's uh, quite helpful to you yeah i think those those hit upon my commonalities as well what i love about union is when you step on campus it doesn't matter you know i travel a lot i step on campus and 
students immediately come up, say hello, and people are just friendly and welcoming, um, and, and I think that's important. It's an academically rigorous campus, um, and on some campuses that can feel stressful or competitive. Um, at Union, everyone seems to be okay, you know? Everyone seems, they're motivated, but no one seems to be stressed out. Everyone seems to be taking good care of themselves and, and able to sort of achieve, but there, that lack of stress may have to do with the lack of competition. So when you have enough professors to work one-on-one -on -one with all the students, there's no reason for competition because everyone can have the access that they enjoy without having to compete for it which gets to Sri Hari's you know, point in that it's very collaborative. People are very supportive. If you're working on something in a lab, someone will reach over and be like, oh, I'm interested in what you're doing and you can share it and not feel like that's a, you know, that you have to keep it to yourself or be competitive. And so I think that environment makes it just a really joyful place to learn. And, and I think over and over again, you're going to hear that, that sense of family, the brothers and sisters of union, and that sense of joy that comes from the learning and the space and the environment on campus. And, and so that's what you kind of feel in the students. It's just, it's kind of just feels good. Right. Um, Srihari, uh, do share a little bit about the residential life and food on campus. So uh, for my freshman year, I lived in a house called Mesa House, which is one of the Minerva's. I was one of the 16 students chosen to live in that house. Uh, Mesa House is a very uh, quiet and a very study focused space. Mesa has its own study room, uh, which uh, most of the students utilize it considering that it's so quiet and uh, you know you can definitely focus on the work that you're doing. The rooms are very spacious in Mesa. Uh, also, the same applies for the Minerva, Minerva as well. Uh, most of my friends, they live in Richmond, which is a freshman only housing. That's a popular one. Uh, as far as uh, uh, food is concerned, the two most popular options are West and uh, upper class dining. So upper class dining uh, is accessible for freshmen only for breakfast, but the West is accessible for all the three meals. We also have other, other options like Dutch Hollow, where you get cuisines, uh, like multicultural cuisines. Yeah, you also have uh, Garlic Knot, which uh, caters specifically Italian cuisines. For example, pizza and of course the traditional garlic knot, which is where the name came from. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I have a very uh, unique question here, uh, which uh, is for Nicole. Uh, Nicole, so uh, every year uh, it's challenging to identify that one scholar, right? Uh, and uh, yes. if there are two students who appear to be a good fit, uh, what 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 would set that one apart, you know, for that hundred percent scholarship? Is there is there something you would like to highlight here? You know, I mean, Trihari, you can say. I mean, it's a great group, right? You were in the room. Everyone you looked around and you met. It's a great group of people. There's no, there's no. It's it's. I have the hardest job because choosing is painful in that. I think there are just so many perfect for just the right one. Um, I'd say, you know, the, the things that stand out, so there is a way to demonstrate academic ability, and I think students engage on that topic heavily, but that comes through in so many parts of your application, and again, to the point of our, our community, the things we're looking at, and often I think as teams we're looking at, is how you engage with your peers, not just how you lead, um, but leadership doesn't mean always being the one in charge, but also understanding how you allow others to have a voice, how you learn from each other. And, you know, and, and all of that can come through in different ways. But um, I think those are the, the features that when I, I see students participating and the scholars that we've chosen, they show that ability to um, learn from each other, to engage with each other, to lead each other. I think it's a community where we have respect for each other um, and, and make that space. And so when I, when I see students, I think that's, that's what I look for is their ability to sort of respect all of those around them. Again, because that's our motto at Union and is really respecting that. And how is that exhibited through the ways, it, it could not even be in, a, in an activity, but it's just the way that you hang out with people and respect them and, and show 
sort of care and concern for them. And so that seems very unacademic, but the academic pieces have already been proven by the time you got to the interview. Um, we're kind of looking at all the other things for sure. That's great. Um, so Nicole, uh, what, what kind of internship opportunities are available for students uh, first? And second question is, uh, is work study also an option at Union available for international students? Yep. So um, we'll start with the work study question first. Every student who qualifies for financial aid automatically, automatically is assigned work study. Um, and you are either you can choose a job based on your interests um, or you can uh, be assigned a job. So that's up to you. That happens automatically. And then for um, internships. So internships, much like everything else at Union, is specific to you. So Hari's work is specific to him. His research is specific to him. If he were to have an internship, it'd be specific to his particular area, not just you know, in astrophysics, but his specific thing that he's interested in to help him figure out, A, do I really like what I think I'm doing? And can I get an experience with that beyond research and build my resume, right? So for our students, there's over 500 institutions that come to Union every year to ask our 2,200 students to please come and do internships with them. And as was said earlier, we have one of the best career services centers in the nation. It's well rated. And so what our, our internship program does is it pairs you not only with, you know, a oh, Goldman Sachs, they sound great and that's amazing. And so you should go and intern there. Well, if that's the direction you want to go with Goldman Sachs or in that term of finance, then sure, we're going to place you in an internship like that. But we also might place you in some other institutions that you might find a better fit. Uh, we had a computer scientist that worked for Microsoft, did an internship for Microsoft, Facebook, and then a financial firm and decided you know, on one of those based on his ability to really feel supported and move up within a company. They supported young people, allowed them to be promoted, liked the culture and the community there. So I think Internships really are reflective of your personal interests, where you see yourself when you leave. Do you want them inside the U.S., outside the U.S., another foreign location? Um, do you want them in a particular small organization, large organization? Are they preparing you for a particular future? And then helping you answer the question of, what do I want to do when I'm done? What, what, what's the best type of environment for me when I leave? Okay. Right. Um... I know we are almost uh, towards the end of the call and I still have a few questions here. I'll, I'll uh, try to answer as many as possible. So how soon can a student start engaging in research at Union? So as Ari said, very, right away in your first term, um, you will start working with research as a part, especially within uh, the STEM courses. It becomes a part of your original experience um, working and understanding what it is you want to do to go forward for many of those courses. Um, if you're very motivated, um, like Srihari, you can, he, he went after what he wanted. He chased it from the very first beginning before classes even started. So he was set to go his first year. Um, automatically after your, your sophomore year, research is a part of your experience automatically based on our um, sophomore research experience. So that happens as a part of our curriculum. Um, it really depends on the student, how clear they are about what they want to do and their ability to just reach out to a professor and make that connection. There's no limit. There's no, you know, only for rule. It's for everybody that um, pursues it. I've had quite a few students who've chased that right away their first year and have been able to pursue it similarly. It's not just this one experience, but um, many students who've been able to pursue that in their first year that are, are focused and able to pursue that. Okay, okay, got it. Um, uh, does Union require freshmen to live on campus? Everyone lives on campus for all four years, except in very, very rare circumstances, dormitories. Um, we have our Minerva houses, we have theme houses, we have a variety of residential living options, but in that way, our community stays strong. Students don't have to worry about finding a place to live or where to store their things. Everything's set up and guaranteed. Okay, wonderful. Uh, if a student has not opted for math in his grade 11 and 12, would that matter or are there, are there courses that the student can take? 
So there are courses that students can take when they come to Union. Take them. Everyone takes a math placement test, and based on that, it places you in a math course that you that you need. Um, so, and in some ways, it can be dep dependent on what you want to pursue in college, and also depending on your curriculum. So, what based on what you've chosen, um, we're aware of sort of how does that reflect going forward, and knowing the limits of what you can choose. So, there's there's no rule, yes or no, with math. Okay. Um, there is uh, someone who's asked, what is the one thing that you love about India, Nicole? Oh, the food. Come on. <laughs> Just one thing. Okay, I can travel all of India and the food is as various as the people, right? And I love, 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 love the food. I love the prince from Jaipur. I love being at Durga Poja in Kolkata. I love the South for the water. I mean, just, I love the people. I love the architecture, but I love the food for sure. Wonderful. And anytime anyone's cooking for me, oh my goodness, I am so appreciative because the food is amazing. Uh, where do union students go after graduation? What kind of jobs do they take up? What kind of uh, grad schools do they go to? Sure. Um, so I actually had a slide about this but it's you know all of they go to the best grad schools in the nation and around the world so ivy league top 10 research one institutions they go to harvard business school they go on to goldman sachs ibm ge they go to all texas instruments they go to wherever is they want to go basically um, our international students all of them except for one or two of the very relaxed individuals um, have their jobs or their graduate schools and are very happy with their placement choices before they even graduate from union. Um, and even for those who wait until the very last minute within six months of graduation, they have their work placement are placed in the United States or abroad. Um, we've had no issues with OPT, OPT extension. Um, we've had students move on for H1Bs, uh, graduate school, everyone is, you know, easy to move on in terms of their success and what they choose. And I think a lot of that has to do with pre preparation. Um, to Sihari's point, you know, he will have made connections through his research with any graduate program he wants to do. They will have seen his work before he leaves Union. And he will have made those connections through his professors before he leaves Union, both through his extracurricular, but also through his academic work. And the same is true with our internships for those in business, they, those internships, that they have and the experience and connections that they make that allows them we have a student who went on to goldman sachs right after he graduated from college and for him that was a connection through the alumni one of the alumni who is one of the a ceo um, partners at goldman sachs and just felt like it felt like a family it felt like a good fit for him they offered him a job he moved right on so i think for our students that transition is is very easy um, in terms of preparedness the other thing I'd mention is that our retention, which is an important question to ask at Union, for international students, almost 100% of our students stay on. The students that leave typically have decided that they would rather be anonymous in a classroom and, and not have that, perhaps they don't have the language ability, honestly, to, to sustain at Union or the interest, but almost all of our students internationally specifically stay on for all four years and graduate within four years. So we talked about the difference between a small school and a large school. Um, four years, you're done, you graduate. If you're an engineer, you're ABET certified, you can work as an engineer. Uh, if you're looking at a large institution, look at their graduation rates. Typically it's a six year graduation rate, which means you're paying for two more years of college just to complete your bachelor's degree. At Union, our students complete in four years. Um, so I think remembering that when you think about the choices you're making, I think is important. Okay. Um, I can see lots of questions coming in and I'm not sure we have enough time to take these. Uh, I'll, I'll answer one, one of these questions. So one question is, what, what if we can't make it to Mumbai for the interviews? So it's, it's actually pretty early to comment on that because we are in so uncertain times right now and uh, don't know what's going to happen seven eight months from now so maybe that is something which we can answer after a few months maybe september or october 
Um, okay, let me see if there is something else that we can answer right away. Okay, I think we can uh, close the call. I, uh, Nicole, if, if you have any comments about the current, uh, the, the yesterday's announcement, uh, are there anything, any, any um, insights that, that you would like to share with us? You know, I think the thing that with everything, um, and I hope our current students feel this, is that there's so much out of our control right now and um, as universities. And what we do is we use our collective voices to lobby our government um, because we believe in, in supporting international students, access to education, access to, you know, having this be a, a community of people who's well supported and and gets the, the services and, and the things that they need. So when we think of individual colleges and universities, you think of us as individuals, but the reality is our, our group as a whole are organized and moving towards our government to make sound choices that are thought out. So though I, I, I would say look for longer policy and something longer than a tweet because you can have a quick policy change as a result to something, but I would also say that when you have time to be thoughtful, things can be reviewed and reconsidered based on the institutions in the United States and how it impacts us. What we're all gonna do is our best to ride out the current pandemic situation and political situation, knowing that both, both are short in the span of our lives and know that in the interim, we're gonna do what we need to do to support our international students. And, and, and that means we have to be very nimble. We have to change and move quickly to respond. But in all of our universities, what we're doing is, is saying, how do we, what do we have to do now to best support our students based on where they're at? And in India, it's, you know, will the embassies open? Will the flights be available? How, okay, yes, then this is what we can do. No, then this is what we have to do. We're just doing our best to respond not just what's happening in the US, but for those in India, what are, what's happening in India and how do we support you best as well? So we'll continue to fight and lobby and, and things will continue to change and move, I think, to be responsive to what's needed in the US in terms of universities. Everything seems to be changing quickly um, with policy here based on the day, so. Right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Nicole and Srihari for your time on the call now. Uh, and uh, I can still see some questions. So uh, if, if all the students, if your question was unanswered, I would request you to please email those to us on our email ID and uh, I'm, we'll surely get back to you. And uh, a couple of questions that I can answer right away is, well, if uh, you have, if you have registered for Next Genius, what is your next step? Next step is take the Next Genius level one test. If you have taken the test, and come back to our website and learn about the Next Genius Partner Colleges. We, uh, we just sent you an email yesterday. Uh, so please check your inboxes and you will you'll receive these two uh, steps in your email as well. So once again, thank you so much. And this video will be put up on YouTube. I'll share the link with all those who registered with us. So if there is anything that you missed out, please uh, watch this video. Th thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you both.